Hello, welcome to Group Therapy, your safe space for conversation related to self-improvement in firearms, archery, and all things outdoors. My name is Justin, and at the table today we have Jason Bainey, we also have Derek Walters from Sales, and we're also joined by some special guests. Jason, I'm going to hand it over to you. Who are our new friends? So we have a very special opportunity. Uh, we are joined today by Trevor and David from Armament Tech. They are Canadian, yes. Uh, well, are we the first Canadians? Kind of, you are the first. The show? This is the international is show today. We are representing uh, the UK and <laughs> Canada. <laughs> and we are <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just now Canada. A, I guess we are. Yes. <laughs> a. So uh, Trevor and David are going to talk about the Armament Tech line of products. Uh, which are scattered about the table. So I will turn it over them to them, and they will tell us about the company. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. Very distinguished to be the first Canucks you, to be on the, yes. on the table. So I think, I I think you're the first vendors to, that we're having yes. as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. So far, it's just been us dumbasses doing this shit. <laughs> first so. Canadians. First Canadians. And first vendors. Great. So, glad to have you. So... Why don't I start with uh, maybe a little overview of the company, a little bit of history. Um, yeah, because you guys have a lot going on, several product lines. And uh, I understand uh, you know, from all of my talking with you guys that it's a single owner company. It is. And based in Canada. So Single owner company um, founded in 1988, I believe, so 34 years. Nice. Um, we started, or the owner started, uh, manufacturing sniper rifles uh, early on for police and military. Uh, so he was building guns. He was building yeah. guns. Uh, was a modified Remington <coughs> 700 platform. It was, uh, That's all there was, was back then, really. That's right. He was, in, he was basically improving on the um, M24. Yeah, exactly. Uh, got complicated, decided that wasn't really going to be... It was too hard to do business, and especially internationally, and there was a lot of players... And about the same time, got uh, involved with Elcan, um, which was Ernest Light's company um, in the early, early, early days. So that evolved into many, many years of supporting the Canadian military. So Armament Technology has supplied and maintained and fixed well over 75,000 scopes in our shop. Um, wow. Just for just for Canada, that's the C seventy nine. So a lot of history in optics. Um, a good partnership with Alcan, who you see on the table here, um, which is still today, and just a lot of knowledge in the company. So Andy, uh, he spent a lot of time inside scopes. <laughs> he did, <laughs> and he also competed all over the world. Uh, nice. was a very successful marksman. And uh, a core group of people that around him were the same. So Armament evolved into an optic company. And then he was primarily C-79s. Then uh, about nine years ago, he wanted to get into long range um, with our tangent data line, which we'll discuss in a little bit. And uh, an opportunity came up with a company which you might be familiar with, <laughs> Premier Reticles. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you're going to clarify this one so everybody gets the <laughs> <Yeah>. first-hand story. <laughs> it comes up all the time. It Maybe not as much as it used to. but So Premium Reticles went out of business, um, and at that time, Armament was a, a distributor for Premium Reticles. When they went out of business, Andy bought the IP for the company. What that meant is that there was all kinds of customers that had Premier Scopes, and nobody was going to support them. Because Armament had sold a whole bunch of them, we decided that we were going to take on the warranty and support, which we still do today, um, even though Premier doesn't exist, obviously, and Tangent Theta is a completely different company. And when did Premier go out? Uh, Seven years? That's eight a, years now. It's been it? eight years. Okay. Actually, it's previous probably a couple of years to that. <laughs> yeah. So we really just bought the assets, which was the tools right. and right. some parts. And I, th I, th I think you launched Tangent. It shot 2014. Teens, if I'm not mistaken, because right. yeah. that was yeah. that was my only time I've ever uh, been to Shot Show. Oh, yeah. and that was one of like the, the highlights of yeah, yeah, so eight years. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> uh, yeah. That, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the five to twenty five was our our, yeah. our first model to release. So um, at that same time, uh, Tenebrex Corporation went into receivership. They 
they kind of had some troubles and we saw an opportunity because we were also the distributor for Tenebrex. So we bought the assets from or for Tenebrex um, and they were in Boston, loaded everything up in the truck, drove it to Halifax. And within 30 days, we had full manufacturing capability up and running and selling Tenebrex products. And we still maintain to do that today. So um, really... The core at the beginning was Elcan, moved into Tangent Theta, and then Tenebrex. And um, now today you see a couple other models, which we'll get into, which is SAI and Zoptec. Was SAI part of a struggling brand that, that, like the first three, were just kind of saved and kind of re That's a great redone? question. No, it wasn't. No, it was <laughs> actually, a fun from the round up, right? Hey, uh, it, it, was was a, it was our brainchild, <laughs> actually. We, it was so it was. we really wanted to have another. We, we wanted to get into the LPVO market. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew that it's, you know. Tough. Pretty tough. Yeah. There's a lot of great scopes out there. We had to start someplace. Yeah. And we, uh, we, we, we couldn't, do, uh, realistically, we couldn't do it through Tangent Theta. Like, yeah. it's, to, to bring a Tangent Theta LPVO, you, you know, it would immediately become the most expensive one on the market. Um, right. Because it would be manufactured in, it would be, mm-hmm. you know, made from the ground up in Canada. Mm-hmm. So it was an idea that, you know, we sat around and we talked about for a long time. And, um, you know, the, the idea to launch a new brand um, yep. in, in, in a way that we could control a little bit more of it. And David actually came up with the name. It was his idea, uh, SAI. What's that stand for? Um, well, what we were talking about, um, what do we... Forget. I do. I do. Um, it was probably a Friday afternoon conversation, <laughs> wasn't it? I just come up with an idea so we can get out. Um, but SAI, um, speed, accuracy, integrity, it was, uh, it's kind of a, an ongoing model through the shooting community, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, so we figured uh, it w- when we were looking at... at it's tied to the radical that's in that, the, the rapid aiming feature that's in that, um, allowing you to get on target quickly. And, and we wanted something to, to kind of celebrate that. So, Yeah, and it's a tough, it's a tough uh, market to break a brand new brand uh, in. Yeah. And yeah, especially the LPVOs when everyone, everyone yeah. takes yeah. one. There's real good ones. There's real junk ones out there. And with LPVOs specifically, it's one of those optics that I think – you really got to see one. Mm. Uh, it's hard to look at the, the specifications and all that because like a, a one power scope. Experiencing the one X. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's, it's, you have to see it yourself because that's, yeah. that's what really sells it. And that's the most challenging part to engineer and manufacture. I would imagine as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it, Took us two years, I believe, in design. So that that yeah. was the other piece to you know, while we're on the SAI topic is mm-hmm. we wanted to have something that was uh, a very good quality optic that held up to the standard of the rest of the things that we either sell or manufacture ourselves. Yeah, and um, you know, I think we came up with a pretty good yeah. offering. Oh, it's fantastic! Took a while to get there. Yeah, we, um, so we have good partners. Yeah, so it's it's always going to so the quality of that scope is always going to be judged against you know Alcan and Tangent Theta, isn't it? Right, right. So, right. Kind of um, pulling off those genetics. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to make sure that we could bring something to market that would that would stand up to that that comparison optically. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems to uh, durability wise seems to be doing well as well. I know we talked a couple months ago, and I asked you how many you had come back, and I think it was maybe one at yeah. that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, the the other benefit of being a manufacturer of optical scopes is we have all these really cool tools yeah. that we can <laughs> run tests upon. So, you know, we have uh, whip machines and drop wow. test machines and we have uh, pressure testing tubes and all of that stuff has, you know, gone through it and we're not going to, we're not going to sell stuff that again, doesn't make that standard. So, and I know we haven't seen any, any, uh, any issues with that here, but so. you know, Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you'll be good. It's it's uh, one of those scopes that uh, is almost like a, like a best kept secret. A lot of people go to the the, the bigger brands that they know of. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. someone calls, "Hey, I'm looking for an LPVO for I don't know thousand, twelve hundred bucks, whatever," and they say, "I got one. Yeah, good, great option for you." And they're like, "Who the hell is SAI?" <laughs> and then you have to say, "Okay, it's it's part of Armin mm-hmm. Technology Tangent Theta LCAN. and they're like, "Okay, yeah, I." I get that, and that's usually enough yeah. to yeah. Uh, get that. But I mean, people need to need to know how good these scopes are because all of us in the office love them. 
It's That's like a reporter hear. from Newsmax trying to fight through <laughs> CNN, yeah. and Fox, and yeah. NBC, ABC, mm-hmm. whatever to get an uh, interview. Mm-hmm. And we knew we were going to we knew we were going to go through uphill it battle. Because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, we we were late to the party, right? But mm-hmm. ultimately, you know, we're based on our background and based on you know the products that we currently have in market. We're never going to bring something to market that we're not completely happy with. We didn't mm-hmm. want to, uh, you know, put something out. We're obviously. Trevor alluded to the, the the testing machines that we have in our place. You know, we're not going to put out a, an optic that's going to turn to dust under under heavy recoil. You know, we test these mm-hmm. things way beyond any recoil we'll see on a rifle, even um, a scar, even a scar. <laughs> Good, because yeah. a lot of people with scars specifically ask that, and yeah. usually, usually the answer is pretty much a maybe, unless there's some optics that are just absolutely known for it, like the like the L cans. Mm-hmm. That was the uh, first one because every You're right. every dude with yeah. a beard and sunglasses in Afghanistan was using those on his <laughs> yeah, scar. So that's, that's, right. that's that's proven. What you got there? <laughs> While you're at it, do you want to address that? Oh yeah, speaking of, <laughs> give me that, give me that. So one thing that uh, we do hear a lot of from our uh, customers is that, uh, especially with optics and products that are primarily militarily oriented, uh, the condition of this this is brand new, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's got. Little imperfections here and there. It looks like it's been mounted. Because it has. Because it has. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just wanted to kind of have, have you guys address. What is your canned response to this? Yeah, because I, I tell one. people it's a military optic. It's <laughs> thoroughly tested. I'd much rather have that than something that shows up that's not been test driven. You know, um, so the standards it's are higher. The most yeah, asked I mean, question. It is. I mean, yeah. as far as the mounting side of things go, anyone mm-hmm. that picks out an Alcan, it'll be new in the box. You know, you'll cut the seal yourself, but it, yeah. it will look as if it's been mounted because mm-hmm. it has. Yeah. Uh, as soon as they arrive with us, you know, from the, so Alcan sent it to us, we mm-hmm. put it on the test reg. We make sure that everything on that scope is right. So as soon as it mm-hmm. comes out of the box with us, it's mounted. Every single scope. Every single scope. And yeah. not just once. There's probably, in the life before it gets in the hands of your customers, yeah. it could be three to four times for mounting, checking for any issues. Uh, we pre-zero it before it leaves. So mm-hmm. we've got a known zero. So customers can get it on paper quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, make sure that's that doesn't goal. ship. So sure I didn't realize you guys QC'd those yeah. in-house. We do. Yeah, we make sure. Yeah, we like, do. Uh, the, we make sure they, there's, there's no zero shift from the, from the one to the four or everything, right? Like, yeah. Um, wow. And that's it, just better. It's, I mean, I mean, if you're spending over over two thousand bucks on an optic like that, it's basically hand picked. Yeah, yeah, it's everything right. is hand done. I mean, you buy a nice supercar, they, they're going to test drive every single one, make sure yeah. everything's good. Yeah, we Same don't do, we thing. don't do batch testing. Like it's 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 no, not it's at at the price point that we know the price point that we sell optics at, mm-hmm. and you know, batch testing doesn't work for that. No. The other question, and sometimes things that happen, there'll be just marks in the mm-hmm. anodization and the aluminum. Mm-hmm. The scope's perfectly fine. It hasn't bled out its nitrogen. There's, it's, it's an aesthetic problem, and I get it. If you spend, you know, twenty five hundred bucks on an optic, mm-hmm. you want it to be perfect, but it's not going to be this. It's built, as we no. said, it's built for combat. So mm-hmm. there's, a, there are blemishes on the outside mm-hmm. and. We don't grade them. I mean, if there's a hack through that, we will probably pull it and do something separate. But it's for its, you know, reliability, the repeat to zero, the quality of the glass, the image, you know, yeah. that sight picture. is It's it's performance over everything else. That's right. And that's I, right. personally, that's how I would have it. I would not want to have one that's batch tested and looks perfect because you're going to mount it anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. So just... Yeah. Have the peace of just love the and peace I'm of mind. Drop it on something. Yeah, <laughs> love the peace of mind that you're getting, knowing that it's been thoroughly tested and it's a zero fail optic. It yeah. needs to work. Yeah. Oh, quickly one thing as well. Um, so what, putting the bits? putting the tan and the black yeah. can next to each other, there isn't much difference. <laughs> is there a difference? <laughs> there is not so, much difference. And this is a nice bright light. Yeah. So yeah. tan and yeah. black. So just be aware, you didn't get a black one. It is tan <laughs> if there's a T on the end of it. <laughs> Uh, and just something quick I remember also, up until fairly recently, Andy was the, touching these himself before they went out the door, at least on the tangent side, these, right? These, yeah. I mean, probably yeah. until, was it last year? Uh, it's been it's two, been a, two, it's it's been been two year years that yeah. he's retired. Um, retired. Quote, unquote, right. retired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, but he's still, uh, so that, he's still that, very that active. Me. Yes, yeah. and, and I mean... Everyone. He still comes back in. Uh, anybody, you know, we've got a pretty good process now. We've got a great crew of people that work at the shop. And, um, you know, we, we 
we basically can't build them fast yeah. enough. <laughs> and Andy, I mean, before Andy retired too, like, um, so now these are all tested again. So Andy <laughs> had every tangent theater that went out, Andy did the final QC on, um, and now it's um, it's Kim, right? Like, it's so uh, it's one still person. It's one person uh, who sat with Andy for a long time before Andy was happy to, to hold up his hand and say, all right, you know, like I, I can step away now. Right. Um, so she spends time with every single one of these, going over the glass, going over the turrets, the feel, the sound, everything nice. like that to make sure that they're good to go, right? Which the feel and the sound is pretty distinct. Yeah. So on these, you mean? Can't tra- just, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it'll Hold translate, up to your mic. <laughs> oh, it's so clicky. Yeah, you yeah. always know. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's some, that's some of that ASMR stuff. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do 30 <laughs> minutes of this. I thought, it, I thought that was something else entirely. It turns out it's just... What, satisfying noises, Justin? Is that pretty much what it is? I cared so little that I never even looked it up. <laughs> I'm sure I'm <laughs> sure it means something. I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm sure I'm talking about The S about probably answer. stands for sound. Yeah. Maybe. Audio, uh, sound, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, Where's no. we need Tristan to be doing <laughs> no, yeah. this on the backside and tell us? Um, one thing I do want to ask, um, where is where does the glass come from in the tangent scopes? Great question. Nobody ever asks us that question. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that's never ever happened. No, I'm glad you brought it up. We were uh, <laughs> discussing this earlier. So our glass is sourced in Germany. Um, mm-hmm. We have suppliers, you know, around the globe. But the best we can tell you is it's sourced in Germany. We don't actually know exactly where it's coming from, but we know that it's in Germany. If that good enough rings the bell. <laughs> it's, it's sourced, yeah. It's the, the big thing is it's it's sourced like for us. It's, it's sourced to a spec. Right? To like their yes. spec, right? Yes, yes. And it all gets. And that's the way it all. Yeah. People get people get hung up on that. They do. But that's that is really the deal. Is it's your spec, yeah. whether it came from Mars. Yeah. Um, right. So, if you like it, you you, you could have a Japanese spec, right. or a, a, a German. It's the same specification, made in Germany, made in Japan. Right. Because it's your spec. It's not going to be any different. Right. So, yeah, he's right. People do get hung up on where the glass is made on these, and they get a little bit kind of weird about Germany versus Japan. Yep. And the best glass in the world is going to be somewhere in in there, typically. There's only a few but places on the yeah, planet that yeah, this really not stuff many. comes from. Yeah. 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 Even once, once you start talking about, you know, the, the, the clarity and the, and the quality, yeah. mm-hmm. that list gets even smaller, yeah. too. Oh, right? yeah. Is yep. that is the glass that you're talking about that it's sourced in Germany, is that just for tangent or is that through all the... So what we're building um, in tangent is what's coming from Germany yep. or sourced in Germany. Glass um, in SAI is Japan. This is Japan. Japan. Okay. Yeah. But um, yes, that basically... Again, is to your spec. To our spec. So, spec. We, so it looks pretty good. Yeah, pretty you're good. Designing this stuff, Mind you look, you. you look, and you can. There's a, you know, there's maybe thirty different specs so you can pick for mm-hmm. a glass, and its cost and <laughs> everything yeah. else that's yeah. involved, just right? So, uh, but you have you have the unique building aspect, yeah, as well. Mm. Yeah, we 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 really have some talented folks um, yeah. behind the scenes at at Armament, um, in in the family of of companies. So it's uh it, it's pretty cool. So on the on the whole nerd aspect, as far as uh, you know, one person doing these and the click feel and mm-hmm. all part of the magic. What I always loved as well is this nice little reticle diagram that comes in with every scope. So you never have to be wanting for a reticle spec. So the nerd in me loves that little inclusion. I especially like that on the SAI <laughs> because with a a mill scope, the only thing you really can't observe directly is things like the reticle thickness and that sort of stuff and maybe yeah. some other small parts of it but i like on the sai it's a uh, it's set up for what a s- there's, there's there's different caliber configurations for it yeah. but whatever it is the the actual uh drop is quantified in moa and mil yep. on a a chart so you can say That's okay right. so yep. i'm you know it, it might be calibrated for a 62 grain 556 but I've got 55 grain where I'm putting it out of a shorter barrel that's calibrated for. How close am I going to get? You can compare your yeah, known ballistics numbers. with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really nice thing to Doesn't be able make, to do. There's no, it's I mean, not a struggle to find that info. No. So, uh, it, it, I mean, it's all over open source, right? Yeah. Because uh, it's the same for the 5.56 and the 7.62. It's the same calculation that's in the Elkan mm-hmm. scopes because, obviously, you know, we designed that reticle. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so it's 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 all over. You know, the information's all over, but we put the the, the radical card in there so that people can 
kind of equate what they have to. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. with with that radical, we're talking about are you still within minute of man, right? Like right. Oh, exactly. I mean, with the variations of rifle and barrel and 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 the ammunition, like if you take a Denier Defense. 308 versus like an HK 308. Yeah. Someone's got 18, one's got 16, one's shooting M80 ball, one's shooting something yeah. else. It's largely going to be close enough yes. for what that optic is for. But you that's can still it. quantify it, which is nice. Something else on the uh, <clears throat> the inclusions that's totally unique to you guys is you make the scopes, you make the caps, you make the ARDs, and uh, across the board, they're all included, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Even yeah. is there an ARD with the SAI? There is an ARD. Yep. Yep. It comes with it. You did okay. the video on it. I just it's been too long. I don't remember. <laughs> it's okay. I don't remember if it was an ARD or <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, so yeah, I mean you guys are including the ARD and caps with everything that everything you sell. We do. Which is nice cuz that's like 200 well, bucks for the, by itself. Except for the it red is. dot. Well, yeah, I mean but uh, you know taking yeah. taking aside that's got a really the, nice cover. <laughs> taking aside the uh, putting aside the cost of the score mm-hmm. like the cost of the uh, the flip covers of the ARD. Um you've just dropped over a grand on an optic. Mm-hmm. Um, why wouldn't you want to to actually protect the lenses? Exactly. Um, which are the you guys get the best position to supply them exactly. as well. What a great segue season. to talk about Tenebrex. <laughs> so, it, so it is Tenebrex, not Tenebrow. It's Tenebrex. 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 Tenebrow EX. I mean, we hear it. I tried to I tried to spell out Tenebrex on a piece of paper. I ran out of space. Yeah. <laughs> People get tenebriated trying yeah. to figure that one out. Yeah. We can't say it's a Canadian thing because it was a Boston thing. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just brought it on. But What's funny is I actually, uh, it, it, before you guys bought them, uh, I had some struggling conversations to get us set up with them because they didn't have a phone number. They like I had to a couple it took me a month or two to get a hold of somebody. Their core business them, was military. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's and, and that's so why it made they were, it yes, their website was terrible. Yeah. But I finally got us set up with them and then you guys bought them, which was good because we already dealt with you. So. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so Tanabrex has a lot of products and a lot of fits for products. Um it goes back to the early days, I think, for the RCO optic um, was mm-hmm. the flip cover kits, ARDs, uh, and we did optical filters, laser filters for that um, business in the U.S. We now carry that all over into into Canada. So if you don't know, we make um, flip covers and we white label them for pretty much every major manufacturer Mm -hmm. and gets put in the box, sold um, as co-branded. For those that are not in the box, we have a really beastie fit guide. Um, The part finder is intense. That part finder finder is a a lifesaver. It's It's a lifesaver. I I love it. So I apologize to everybody (laughs) in advance. (laughs) It went down once one day for like an afternoon or something, and I was just crushed. I was (laughs) recently. My computer was on fire. I was running around. So (laughs) we're trying to get better. (laughs) We're we're really trying to get better. Um, The the problem is, though, like it's, you know, we got 6,000 plus fits. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but it, it keeps growing too, because not only do manufacturers keep releasing new scopes, but you'll get a guy call up with a ten-year-old scope saying, "Hey, I just mm. wondered if you got it, and we'll get all the dimensions." And we're like, ah, yeah, mm. you know what? We do have a fit for that. So then yeah. that yeah. gets added. Kind of like how we too. did with that, uh, the new razor, yes, from Vortex, yeah. um, yes. which which uh, made me curious. How does that process usually work? Does it does do the manufacturers reach out to you and say, "Hey, we've got a new thing," or do you reach out to them? It depends on what the relationship is that we have. I mean. Mm-hmm. It depends on whether both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where there's me at my desk with a set of uh, calipers. Just that doing happens too. That happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It we, worked. We have a obviously we have an inventory of thread rings um, and the UAC adapters, which kind of clamp over the back, which is not a yeah, 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 It's yeah, in there. Yeah. And the we, old Schmidt, yeah, sh- old yeah. Schmidt oculars five twenty. So we just we mm-hmm. cross reference that at the shop, and then we can come up with a, a close fit. We have to thank all the customers that we've sent stuff to that kind of are our fit guide testers because sometimes we just don't yeah. know because mm-hmm. we don't have an inventory of all the scopes. Yeah, there's an infinite number of scopes. Getting out scopes there, to right? Canada is not the easiest thing to do. And it's not the easiest anyway. thing. Yeah, you're right. It's, um, um, it's one, of the, and, and you would be shocked at how inconsistent things are. You know, like there there are, there are no common threads. There are no common so standards. Yeah, yeah, like the the uh, threading on the inside of of the objective. Sometimes someone asks, "What's the thread on that?" I'm like, "I don't." 
I don't uh, know. Does the manufacturer know? I uh, probably not. I'm yeah, sure one know, guy Bush, in Bush engineering Hill changed knows. their threads yeah. and their HDMRs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Night Force, their 50s. There's two different 50s. Yep. Didn't Sh- didn't Schmidt change their ocular? They did change their ocular. Slightly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you've yeah. got. Uh, it depends. A couple you know, times. Maybe. If you're if you're getting an ocular, the old one and the Schmidt, new ones. It, it's going to depend on you know it, it'll be a Schmidt and a PM2, but it mm-hmm. will depend. Your fit will depend on what year that scope is from. Yeah, which I'm sure is just lovely to deal with. One of the some of the key features, one of the main features, is that it has a positive locking. Mm. It it will rotate mm. around so you can position mm. it anywhere depending on what your what your setup is. It opens uh, up wide as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, and they are the most robust out there. Yes, and the flip covers will snap onto the front of an anti reflection device. Reflection device. You can see the little gnarled edge, um, which is on all of our scopes, including the SAI, for scopes that don't have that. And there's a lot more that are putting that in, in the manufacturing process now, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, we have adapters that will allow you to, to put in, whether it's the screw in or if it's the clip over kind. And I just brought this over here because briefly, Derek oh, yeah. mentioned the uh, the 6 to 36 Vortex. They do just now make a kit you didn't even know this. That's for the 6 to 36. I feel partly responsible for that. Matching color. <laughs> Look at that. Well, there you go. It's a present. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. The, there's the kit. Matching color. So uh, you can throw color. one of those on the one we have here. Yeah, we can. So there we go. I think Lee has it now. right now. We'll have to, have to steal it off. So we're going to get get that in the catalog here today. Excellent. Get it loaded quick, yeah. Good stuff. So Zoptech? Zoptech. Okay. It, that's another Start one. Start with the next. Say, it's, 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 that's an X. Okay. <laughs> Zop deck, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was, again, uh, a, a requirement that we wanted to have a red dot on top of an Elkin. And we just wanted to do it ourselves. So we had this one um, made for us, basically. Um, we got it out of Japan, but, uh, you know, it's made in China. So it's, it's a good, solid um, red dot. It fits what we needed, and there's probably going to be an evolution of this, maybe under SAI, maybe something different, may stay Zoptech. We haven't figured it out yet. Um, we are now um, offering configurations, which we should probably talk about, um, that's a little bit different bef- than before with Elkin. Kind of because of this, you can now, on our price sheet as a, as a dealer, buy it included uh, with the mounting plate. Right, you went uh, from eight SKUs to like 80. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, <laughs> that was, was one awesome, of the questions that I was going to okay, ask. Good. Yeah. So um, part of that, we have adjustable arms levers. So if you have a rail that may be non-standard, and we get this occasionally depending on the, what you're putting mm-hmm. it on, sometimes you just need to tweak the adjustment. So the MK2 yep, right. um, levers have a little side adjustment so that you can tighten it and take out any of the play that might be in the scope on the mount. Um, that's an added option, so we can kit that all up at the factory and send it out uh, in advance. It's been very popular too. Like so, we've we've had a couple. Of, we've added a couple of different options yeah, as right you there. mentioned. Um, the uh, the adjustable oh, yes. arms levers. Uh, you can have the adjust. So you can have it as that one sits right there, as that T1 sits right there, you know, as it comes. Or you can have just the adjustable arms levers, or you can have the... And then there was inclusions levers. of the red right. dot as well, right? Adjustable arms levers. Yeah. With the red dot on the uh, on the actual, you know, made for the Spectre plate. Um, or you can have one or the other. What's the uh, the footprint on these without this plate, so, of course? Yeah, Since really you're all about question. cross-reference fits, yeah, you know? I love cross-referencing. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I'll tell you what, like, um, we were under the impression that it was proprietary, but we found an, we found that it does fit yeah. something else the other day, which I, I cannot remember so what it was. We were working One with the Arasaka guys, and th- I think they helped us, but... Um, yeah. You consulted someone else for a fit for once? Uh-huh, we had to. <laughs> yeah, we had to. Because, I mean, we make the plates, obviously, for for that, and we have a little rail grabber, so if you wanted to mount it directly on something, yep. mm. uh, which is, yeah, yep. exactly that. Um, I don't remember what it is. We'll have no, to, we'll have have to, to dig that out. The, the Zoptex skews, this was straight out of the package, so you can buy this. So there's f- two or four Zoptex So skews. right now, the only thing that we have is the four MOA okay. uh, dot, and then we're looking at something a little bit smaller in the future. So, so then four, so there's two skews? Yes. 
So one, with, one with the rail with grabber, mount, yep. and then one with, with the mount. Yep. Okay. And we we can figure out the footprint stuff later. It's just nice to know. Uh, people, would, it's one of those things that you know. Yeah, they'll put We're it going on the rail question. Can. Yeah. We're going to get the question. We and have uh, we have the <laughs> so we have the schematics for it and. Probably should have the answer for it, but we yeah, should. I think. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed that we don't. Concerned, we just went through this like yeah. last month. Too much maple syrup last night. Sorry, <laughs> 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 that's a problem. Um, yeah, I, I just I, I love that you guys kind of have the whole package here. You know, you've got Red Dot LPVO, uh, the LCAN, which is entirely unique yeah. in mm-hmm. the world, um, and then the high end scopes. Is there any? And you got, you know, within the, the tangent, you cover kind of a lighter weight hunting option, yeah. which we have here. So that, and that's, that's one of, so we got two of the three to 15s that we offer there. We've got the, the 34, oh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the 34 millimeter uh, tube professional, and then the Hunter, which is a variation of the Marksman, the three to 15 right. M. Right. Um, so we are, we, you know, this is available with the, uh, with what, what are called tactical turrets, right? right. The exposed right. turrets as well. So are there are there any niches left that you're going to try to fill that you can talk about? Mm, none that we can talk about, but we're working on some stuff for sure. Um, yeah, maybe just too early days. But gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's hard to hopefully the supply chain straightens yeah, out so you well, can. Well, I mean that's a, that's actually something that we should touch on as well. Mm. Like we um, we appreciate everyone's patience and all of your customers that are waiting we are we can't build them fast enough with demand so and it's it's a mix of a whole bunch of things but supply has really um it made it difficult for us where you know an eight to ten week delivery time was somewhat the standard is now maybe you know, 12 to 14 yeah, kind in of some thing. cases but yeah uh it's we'll an, don't get me wrong like being busy is a nice problem to have, yeah. but it's still a yeah. problem to have, when you, you know, can't like, supply yeah, it it's thing. different when yeah. you're you're handcuffed because yeah. of the supply issue which were you know cars yeah, freezers. I yeah. mean, the good thing is, yeah. uh, what I would yeah. like, they are coming out. Like, they yeah. they are coming out. Uh, they're coming off the production lines on a regular basis. It's just, you know, so just trying to keep up with mm-hmm. the orders that come in. So they are moving. Oh yeah. Oh, they're definitely moving. moving. Yeah. How did the uh, How did the Tano take off? As you expected, better, worse? Uh, it's been pretty strong, to mm-hmm. be honest. We're just we're struggling to get them out there quick enough. Uh, it's been a great response. It's a uh, I mean, it's a really sharp looking scope. Yeah. Um, yeah, like we, it comes in the AIF turret version as well, which is so of, of a, similar, to, similar yeah. to that. Yeah. Your uh, version of the locking turret. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's been good. I, I think it would be a lot better if we could make them faster. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. So um, we do have probably something we could talk about for future developments for tangent theta. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's kind of on the dock if, uh, you know, at least prototype testing this year. Yeah, I think so. Our, our plan is to have a 7 to 35 um, available for at least shot in maybe prototype stage. A lot of the hard work has been, well, all the hard work has been done. It's now just getting the pieces mm. um, assembled. Stuck um, in the supply chain. Stuck in the supply mm-hmm. chain. Yeah, uh. We've tested what we need. Like, we've done a lot of the the background testing you know we talked about the, the drop test i've mentioned it a couple of times you know we've had the lenses in a body on the drop test we know that the lenses are good we know that um uh, you know that the internals will hold up to a thousand g's mm-hmm. um that's a lot th- of g's it is a lot of g's yeah um but it's it's a case of you know it, it's a brand new from the ground up scope so it's not like there's much that's interchangeable between a five to twenty-five and right. a seven to thirty-five, or you know something in that kind of spec. There is one scope that I saw. I think you had brought up the article, Jason. It was a, it was an all steel scope. Yeah. For purposes oh, yeah. of yeah. an yeah. experiment on that website has since turned off their pictures. <laughs> Have they? Dark. Yeah. Oh well, sure. that's so. Will, will this need to be edited out? <laughs> <laughs> well, we they, it was published. It. So yeah. No, so they no, built a stainless, fine. and I called them on. I'm like, was, did you guys actually do this? <laughs> so they they did this stainless scope for this company, but uh, it was a, it was a it was a paper that was written on you know the different expansion the, pro- the expansion properties of different metals. Yeah. Uh, thermal, you know, yeah. 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 Putting uh, putting. Uh, uh, Aluminum scope and steel mounts, or you know, vice versa, and and the idea was to pairing steel to steel, right? And it still might, it still might get legs. Um, and 
to be you know to be clear we actually didn't do the tube but they mm. so the the guy that we partnered with um did the tube and has a lot of really good data and, and information on kind of what that means when mm. when the temperature changes um so don't have a lot more information but it could be something that uh, that shows up in the future but there's a lot of stuff that goes around that that has to happen so it's still in work. progress that's yeah. the information it's not out yet we yeah, don't know the results of that dropping that on any rifle no that is absolutely no. not yeah. something that's going to be yeah. sold anytime no no right. but so it's, it's interesting a, to see it's a fun experiment development though that's exactly what yeah. 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 at yeah. this stage of the game that's what yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and we're lucky enough that we can control everything that we can do stuff like that and yeah. mm-hmm. you know, dabble a little bit not to distract from our main purpose of you know no, nice little skills, side project yeah, yeah, yeah. I like when, when, some, when somebody when somebody like uh like them approaches us you know the big brains in the show mm-hmm. you kind of get excited right yeah, they like, like that, yeah. you know they, they like to see the charts and the graphs and mm-hmm. and uh suddenly yeah. things start moving and that's yeah. why there's things like this <laughs> that's that is why there's <laughs> things like that, that yeah, yeah. 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 diagram i was pointing to for those you can't see because right you know, yeah nerd love yeah, so speaking of the build quality and everything you're you're talking about with trying out new different metallurgy and everything, uh, I got to say, coming into this and in the, the position here, I I knew my basic things about hunting and everything and wasn't I didn't realize there was such a huge world when it comes to optics. Um, and then being able to handle all the different brands that we carry, I will say that one thing that really made me a fanboy immediately um, not just the glass quality that's in that size six. That's where I have most of my experience was messing with that. But the build quality you guys have across all of your products are just so solid and tactile. And I think that speaks volumes to the product. I mean, the quality's there. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more marketing, but I think you guys, I mean, it's one of those things where- Get their hands filled you have scopes. To, yeah, put it in your hand yeah. and that's yeah. all you need to, to really convert you and yeah. understand the quality. Um, it's one of those things that just speaks for itself. Especially that one to six. I love Which, that. How good that thing is for the price that it's at. Yeah, I think that's going to be what's going on my my AR build. So mm-hmm. we 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 spoke a few episodes ago about AR builds, and that really mm-hmm. got my juices flowing. <laughs> and and I decided, you know, rather than invest in another uh, PRS or hunting mm-hmm. rifle, uh, I decided to do AR build, and I think that size six is going to be is is going to go right on top of that thing. I, I think love that. Scale. The reticle that we have in there now lends itself to a whole bunch of different mm-hmm. disciplines too. So yes. it's a pretty dynamic. Well, especially more reticles in the future, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. There, there, will be, be there will be there will be more radical options in the future. <laughs> Just um, keep beating. Yeah, yeah. yeah like that's sure. it's one of those things. Um, you know, when you when you use that radical the way it's intended to be used, and when, you know, when when I talk about how it's intended to be used, I'm talking about those those posts off the middle. Um, I mean, it was the, intended for field military right, yeah. use. It brackets yeah. it yes. brackets a man sized target yeah. at 100 meters. So I mean, as long as you've got, uh, you know, whatever your target is between those posts, you can get rounds on target or at least in center mass. So were you instrumental in that reticle? So that reticle was designed by Andy. Okay. Um, that is Andy's baby. Uh, he is. Um, we've I've I've done a lot of the testing for it in that. Um, but Andy's had that idea for a little while. But yeah, people have to keep in mind it's it is a battle reticle basically. Yeah, it's yep. made for military use, made for three gun use, yep. where it's yeah. just quick and dirty. Well, Got to be yeah, so quick, you, quick a shot on target. That's right. So if you look at um, it, one, I think in the manual, um, we have a, there's a picture of the reticle and it's showing against an Ipsic, Ipsic target. Exactly. Um, because again, it, uh, the Ipsic target is at 18 inches across and it and it brackets it very very well. Uh, at 100 meters, um, it shares a lot of um, a lot of its heritage with the OS3 reticle, right? Yes, it does. The I have Canadian OS3. Thing. Remember the the three X uh, pre predates. You know when we were selling the the, the straight. Doesn't Ari oh. have one of those? Didn't Ari he had a four. Those? That's a four. So there's a four, four and then pre- yeah. previous to that, we I don't even commissioned a three. three. Yeah. How That's long ago was that? It was a minute. Uh, yeah, it's been so. I I think the last one we sold was probably uh, at least six seven years ago. Oh, uh, back some some Alcan history. Uh, yeah, the OS. Okay, <laughs> I do remember that was so. It was before the four. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. The same time. No, it was about the same time because so the the history with the four, the British military picked it up um, and it became their 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 common optic. I mean, the one to four was built specifically for SOCOM, um, and then. Then now continues on on many different theaters all around the globe. The three was meant to kind of fill a, a bracket that the um, C seventy nine mm-hmm. was uh, filling for the Canadian military. 
in a commercial version with a really specific reticle. Um, but at that point in time, just with the way the market was going and, and people were looking at the fours and the one to fours and the three wasn't the popular uh, scope. So it just kind of, mm-hmm. it fizzled out, but kind of went you know, the way of the three wheeler. It yeah. did, which was really <laughs> cool and unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, but over that, and over your... and over and over <laughs> and into a ditch. Down the hill, That's yeah. how yeah. those went. Yeah. Um, I particularly like the reticle on this with the little X-wing sort of uh, hash marks in the uh, yeah. top left, right, and, and all that. Because at uh, one power, like I'm looking at it right now, even without the reticle mm. turned on, I can still use it plenty effectively. <laughs> which Absolutely. is a nice fail-safe to have. And even if you want to flick it on, it's daylight bright for sure. Um, so I do like the reticle that at one pa- since it's first focal plane mm-hmm. um, can be a little bit tricky to balance uh, one power speed and higher powered precision with it. But uh, those those markers really do help. They do. I mean, in the testing that we did, um, you know, we we were looking at how quickly can you get on target at a hundred meters, you know, throughout mm-hmm. the magnification range, and if mm-hmm. you use it the way it was kind of intended, using those. The rapid aiming feature, those those mm. uh, those posts that direct into center. If you use that, you know, as your uh, as your pointer, essentially, mm. uh, you can get on very quickly. And I mean, w- with that, you can get on accurately and quickly too. If you're looking at a, a target at 100 meters, uh, um, an IPSC target, you can make you know A and B shots very very easily um, at one power. And you can probably do it without needing to turn the illumination on those you times. Can. Uh, because it's 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 enough of a it, it it's visible enough. Which would be good on a two way scenario. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Um, something that I think we need to just maybe spend a f- couple seconds talking about, which doesn't get enough attention. Lock- which I think locular, the ocular mm-hmm. end. But we make a polarizer mm-hmm. that goes oh, on the ocular. I thought you were end. talking about the locking ocular. Oh, well, we can talk no, about that. we can talk about that too. <laughs> but the polarizer, <laughs> nice. I think, is is one that more people need to understand. Uh, the benefits, and it's not just for military and law enforcement, although that's yeah, what anymore. it was designed yeah. for. So, if you wanted to see or shoot through, you know, a, a reflective surface, that's what what helps. But for a lot of the long range and, yeah. and competitive guys, it helps cut down on the glare and the haze. If you are shooting over a reflective surface like the water mm-hmm. or snow. snow, for us, snow is a big one. Yeah. Snow is a big one. Or for you guys, like polarizer, have, really I, helps. Yeah, yeah, I have a polarizer on the back of my. Um, on the back of my competition rifle, um, and it is, it, you know, on on bright days, it takes a glare right out. Um, if I'm shooting at winter, I don't have to worry about the reflection off the off the snow. It's really what's really it do to mirage? Um, it doesn't affect. It totally region. eliminates it. <laughs> well, <I'm just> curious, <laughs> no. It's on video. <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it make it more visible no. um, to read, or you know, because it could go either way. It, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't make it more visible. It doesn't make it any less okay. visible. Um, you know, like you, or at least more not, just remove some of the eyes. noise. Yeah, that's right. Um, I will say though, the polarizer is nice to have on a hot day with the haze in the air. Cuts right through. Yeah, it, yeah. it does help. It, um, and you know, again, we make uh, one that fits pretty much everything, uh, mm. uh, any optic on the on the planet. So, so that's so. an underappreciated, it, underused. It sure is. It is. Yeah, yeah. It sure especially is. when people know what. What uh, Why polarization it. does? I mean, yeah. a lot of people have polarized sunglasses. Mm-hmm. You know, 100%. people know exactly they can they can directly relate to that. What kind of length does that add when you pop it on there? It ultimately it's housing a flip cover, yeah. um, so it's it's the same thing basically. It's the same it just thing. has same the thickness. Has There's a, a dial on the back of the polarizer, so we don't have one to show. So maybe a millimeter or two. Yeah, it you basically you tune it so that you can see where it's right. where it's polarizing. Right. And then that's it. So if you don't want it there, you've, like David said, it's in the flip cover, you flip it out of the way. That's it. Um, I love that. So it really yeah. adds no no right. length. Gotcha. Um, other than the the dial itself, which is, as I said, maybe a millimeter or two. And yeah. You can convert that to imperial <laughs> after the fact because I have no idea. <laughs> It's we, that big. About 40, <laughs> about 40 <laughs> thou per millimeter or something. We can convert 9 mil and 10 mil and 12.7 mil. We know what those are. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I think there's a lot of website uh, conversion websites that are making some good money off of the ignorance of Americans <laughs> with our you know imperial system. How you say that? Because I, no, I have no idea what it is in imperial, so it doesn't matter. It yeah. works. It works. Yeah. There you well, go. So we covered all of the lines, right? Um, oh yeah. Did we adequately? Yeah. Oh, so Derek, you had some comments mm. on the uh, MOA scenario. Yeah, just yeah. I, uh, not it's not just uh, it's it's not just tangent doing this, of course. But uh, my my uh, question to you guys, as far as 
what do you think is the reasoning why there's not many high quality scopes like this that have tree reticles set up in minute of angle? Uh, you want the real answer? Or? <laughs> well, I mean, I want the whatever well, this I mean, podcast is rated. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, I mean, we obviously we can only speak for ourselves, but mm-hmm. uh, with the majority of our scopes going into a sporting market, mm-hmm. um, there really aren't that many guys shooting PRS that are doing so in, in MOA. Um, and that's, that's really where the tree is desired the most. And that's the thing. What yeah. My take on it would be. Most of most guys wanting MOA are older guys. Mm-hmm. Most older guys don't want the tree because it's overwhelming. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, the two, when the that. two come together, there just isn't near. There isn't as much demand in scopes like this to support it. I mean, I think I mentioned to you guys earlier on that MOA for us is essentially, and it, it's not a recent thing. Like over the last several years, has essentially been a made to order product. Like we don't, right. we don't tend to. S- you know, churn them out and stock them. So we're about the only ones that stock them. Yep, pretty much. Um, Reticles for us are, uh, they're tough um, because everybody wants something. Yeah. um, And I'm not saying it's it's a fatty kind of a thing, but uh, it's a personal. People, <laughs> people it's a personal. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. a fat. It we, totally is. Yeah. Well, yeah, we want we w- of course we want to have the reticle that everybody wants, and I think we've got a a good mix of we offers. To, we had to go to dots in the middle. We yes. had to go to trees yes, everywhere. Yes, trees are fine. Dots are fine as well. You I shut like up. dots. Yeah, yeah I like see? dots. <sighs> see, uh, I now saying that well, the, the guy in our company that I shoot with most often, uh, Ted. Um, he hates dots, uh, and he will only use our Gen 2 XL. Ted's, Ted's my guy. We've been, we've, <laughs> so, see, we've been doing it Jason. for a long time. <laughs> Every time we bring this up in our office, it's, it's Ted, like two Ted hours of yeah. just everyone's fighting with everyone because everyone yeah. thinks something. So multiply that out over a market, and here we are. <laughs> Every time I lend him a scope with a dot reticle, it ends up in his creek in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely. It's, it's funny because Ted's a Gen 2 XR lover. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. So, yeah. you know, any any new rifle that comes in that is going to be designated for Ted gets a Gen 2 X. Yeah, exactly. But that's, <laughs> that's the say, only thing he'll shoot. That, that's that's funny. I, I, I'm sure we did have that conversation, actually, yeah, sure did. years ago. Yeah. But I have uh, have warmed up the 3XR fine. Now we've got it, you know, tight. Basically, I can go to a dot if it's kind of a tight gate, smaller dot, yeah. where I can pretend there's they're connected. Yeah. Um, like so I've, I've managed I've managed to adapt Nice. So you, you asked, uh, actually, you asked earlier on about, um, you know, are there any new developments for the tangent line or anything like that we can talk about? And obviously we touched on the 7 to 35, but reticles are one of those things that we're always talking about. You yeah. know, like it's, it, it takes a, it takes a lot of conversation for the talking to go to a prototype because, you know, for us to buy one radical isn't cheap and, you know, we want to make sure we've got everything in there that we want to. Uh, the most recent radical we brought out was the, the JTAC radical, yeah, it's going uh, very well. Collaboration with with Claire Blackadder, yep, um, and that's you know that that's moving pretty well. Uh, people seem to like it, but again, it, it it fits a particular type of shooting, right? Like that is a relatively simple three way crosshair uh, with a dot in the middle. So if you hold, if you use that tree, well, you can't. You know, no use that radical, right? Right. Um, well, and yeah, what I learned about him is he's uh, he's against the green and tends to dial wind. Yes, he yep. does. So because of that, he doesn't need all of that mess. So exactly. he dials both directions. Yeah. And and actually, after hearing that, uh, have have thought about doing that as well. And in, in a more windy, if it's a more consistent situation, uh, I would I would try that as well. So funny. I think over the last, I want to say, so I came up on on Horace radicals, right? Like that's kind of what I learned on. That's what I learned to shoot on. Um, or at least that's what I learned long range shooting on. Um, I then I've transitioned to to more minimal radicals since, and I've just this year started playing around with. Right, I went from holding everything to dialing elevation and holding now you're wind. dialing everything, and now I'm, I'm pretty much there. Yeah, yeah like it, is, I, it is an interesting <laughs> it is an interesting concept. I got I I appreciate it after thinking about it. You know, if if it's not going to be too much of a magnitude no. shift. Yeah. I also think it's just nice to start center. It just yeah. proves that there's no one right way to right. this. Right. Well, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, my change was driven by the fact that the scope that was on my competition rifle, we had to send away yeah. as a demo. <laughs> so I had to grab... You got forced. And, and then I had, a, I had a competition that weekend, so I had to grab something else off the shelf, and it just happened to be a JTAC. So now he's converted. Now, nice. I'm, now, nice. now I'm a convert. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Interesting how those things evolve. 
Yeah. Pretty wild. Something uh, minutia on the tangent. Yep. You have the CCA, which you don't like to make and don't make anymore. We don't make any. Do it's make hard anymore, to make no. them good. Dude, it's, it's really difficult. Yeah. yeah, like it. It puts to us your to your to spirit. our standards, yeah. yes. and it's that overclick mm-hmm. when you get to that hard mm-hmm. stop that you have to. The only one point one come 1. back 2 on is, is hard, right? Um, also, it, it puts a, you know mechanically it puts a stress on too. Right. Um, you know, trying to uh, more prone you, to failure. You 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 held up the uh, the turret to your mic earlier on to, to kind of give an idea of how tactile the clicks are. To make a click that is then more tactile than that, super uh, tactile requires yeah. you know uh, quite a bit of uh, creative engineering, as it were. So and there's then, how many of those do you think came to the U.S.? Uh, I would say a dozen. There's maybe a couple dozen. Yeah. There's a couple dozen in existence. And it, I mean, we do get asked about it fairly regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to kind of come in waves a little bit. Uh, yeah, some Fad. sniper's hide post or something. We'll, yeah. we'll look Ooh, I need a locking it. turret. Or I, need, I need an yeah, 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 phone calls. Right? In, the same, yeah. in the same reason that when like a grand thumb video comes out, there's all kinds yeah. of everyone repeating the same stuff he said in. I'm like, oh, I wonder where you got that from. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, okay. So the CCA, you, you guys have your unique acronyms here, and then the AIF is mm-hmm. basically your answer to a locking turret, mm-hmm. which... Auto isolation just, feature. Yes, yeah, I, like, so I like the Canadian take on that yeah. one. <laughs> it's essentially a sleeve that fits right. over the turret. Right. Uh, when it's down, it spins freely. When, yeah. it up, it locks, it, when it's up, it locks the turret, and you can yep. move it, right? Um, so available on... So the AIF is uh, on so the basically the Hunter mm-hmm. scope, and then... We'll order them once in a Anything while. Anything on, on the, the professional. 25, yeah, so you can get it on the yeah. 3 to 15p as well. Anything. With, so basically the Hunter and the professional series. The big 3 terms. to 15 or 5 to 25 for the big terms. Well, we've seen, I mean, it's it's like a 1% scenario there. So, you know, we, we do still keep them in here, but the demand is fairly minimal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, um, you know, for the Hunter, it's obviously when you're going through the right. through bush, trees, right. whatever. Um for the for the guys you run in the big scopes, uh, you know it's it's to prevent knocking it off when you right. go into a barricade or something right. like that. Um, I don't I don't know whether I want to say this or not, but all of these can be upgraded to AIF if somebody I already did. Yeah, I know I shouldn't have yeah. said that. <laughs> we're, we're, what's your phone number? <laughs> I don't want people calling on these hundred euro. <laughs> yeah. No, I've got yeah, I've got uh, one of my. Good customers and old old customers. Yeah. A friend of mine that uh, is probably going to send you a few of these. Yeah. It's the thing, like with with the fact that because we do build them in house and we you know we do all the machining. I mean, we can do pretty much anything. It's well, just a question of how much we can't cost. change the reticle. No, we well, can't. We do can't that. do. We get that a lot. Actually, we should specify that. So we can't do reticle swaps, uh, and it's because of when the way these scopes are built are built because they're in there to stay. The reticle is bonded in there, right? So yeah. in order to do a reticle switch. We would have to rip everything out and essentially build a brand new scope. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just can't do it. So you could do it for enough money, but by that point, it would cost as much as you buy a new scope. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, like uh, that's that's kind of where we're at, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, what's what I what I've always appreciated about them is the whole locking and and uh, uh, yeah, the MTC mm, feature. Like, well, the locking in general. But the zero, the, the zero, zero, uh, zero the tool is zero. Sorry. Well, that zero. yes, yeah. but I didn't even get to that. But just. Just the way the turrets are, they're not easy to bump. Not no, sure, no. really grinding. Yep. Um, Aesthetically, I love the helical cut to them. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's a nice, looks like Leia. And then the zero stop is there in case you do bump it. Yep. But yeah, well, I, that wasn't even on the agenda here, but you're right. The, the tool of zero stop for me has been priceless because yep. I can zero on my own property. I have a 100 yard mm-hmm. line and I tend to go down there with my gun and my ammo and forget my tools. So it cuts cost. It saved me a lot of running back to the house to get Allen wrenches and such. So for me, and then and then on all of the switch barrel rifles, I run yeah. on an AI. So you know I've got seven or eight barrels for that gun. So I can have a catalog, and that's actually a video Derek and I talked about doing. Is we're gonna plot the barrels and see what all of the mm-hmm. offsets are, and it'd be a little map to rezero yeah, the barrel cool. when you put it on. Yeah, we have a we have a switch barrel in the shop. Yeah, uh, but that's around. that's been. And, priceless for that scenario it's fantastic you know we we have it zeroed essentially for 308 and then we know what the the switch for yep. 65 yep. and 338 is uh, one of the things on that was uh do you actually re-zero it or my idea was i'm i'm not sure if this is my idea originally. I'm, I'm sure someone else smarter than me has thought of it but if you're zeroed at 
100 yards with your 308, and then you send a 6.5 after it. 6.5 might hit a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. You would just set your, your – if you have like a, uh, a uh, Kestrel or something, you can actually set your zero height yep. on that have cartridge. Have your offset in that profile. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, we will be doing a video on at some point once we you know, figure that out. But for me, I, I, I mean – you know, kind of, kind of moving off. For me, I re-zero it. I mean, mm-hmm. that's I. I know what my offsets are. I know what it. I know what it. Uh, you know, it because returned. you can rely on the scope to exactly. do it. I can rely mm-hmm. on the scope to do it. I can also rely on the on the rifle that we have yeah. to return two zero once I put the original barrel back on, and you know my my zero at three oh eight might be at one hundred meters, but at three thirty eight is at three hundred meters. Yep. Um, you know, so just re-zeroing the scope makes sense for me. It does, and, 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 and the toolless re-zero obviously makes it. Awesome. It's know, awesome. So quick. I just recently put uh, my 22 Creed on there for shooting little varmints. Oh, nice. From my 6.5 Creed, which is what I have my son hunt deer with. I like, can, can tripod mount it because he can't obviously manage an 18-pound <laughs> rifle. Um, 18, that light. <laughs> uh, probably, I don't know. I've never actually weighed it because I don't care. Um, but my offset has been 1.1 mils in both axes. Yeah. And I've done it several times now. And... This is the first time it's been a little off. It was almost half a click. Oh, really? <laughs> almost half a click. Get, get so, out. So what's get funny out. is, so what's funny is, I when I zeroed this, and actually Luke was was there, it came back to dead center. Where before, I had to program an eighth of an inch of uh, yeah. of uh, offset into it in both directions. Now it goes back to center. So. But that was relying on the barrel as well. So I love that hmm. scope and barrel rezeroing between after, you know, five iterations. Now it's eighth of an inch off. <laughs> I'd call that good But enough. it's off in the good direction. Now it's dead yeah. center. So yeah. <laughs> I zeroed the offset in the Kestrel. But yeah, that's, nice that's how good this stuff actually is in the field. It's fun to watch your little guy uh, on YouTube. <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah, great. And he's clicking himself now, so he's he's oh, been clicking cool. since he was eight. He's, oh, nice. you know, he's not. But yeah, it's nice when the scopes do what you want them to. Yeah, I mean that's the idea, right? Like we talk about, you know, people talk about the glass and stuff like the glass and the image quality, and everything like that. But I mean, the big thing that doesn't get talked about enough is the the amount of time and effort that goes into the mechanical repeatability of it, right? Like I mean, ultimately, and then even the feel. Yeah. Because yeah. it's ama- I mean, it's amazing how feel can differ between scopes. Well, if we have effectively covered all of the brands, uh, is there any? If there's any holes there you want to fill, I think we've covered it pretty well. Is there anything uh, you guys want to talk about before we uh, wrap up today? On well, I've got I've got a list of questions we've from guys at the house. For us. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so right. Yeah, we have a, just a few, printed them out too. A that's few right. special callers. <laughs> mine are on. A, mine are on a little. Note so Derek's card. got oh, his own questions. list. No, we've already answered. Yeah, we didn't have a chance these. to review these questions. So, uh, yeah. I do have one that's going to catch so you by surprise, too. Geez. We'll save that for the end. Yeah, mine are good. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you got yours covered? <laughs> well, go yeah, over. mine are covered. I'm good. Go, go over them. What were they? Uh, let's quickly. see. Get my paper here. So, we can uh, refresh the answers, yeah. Uh, Is one of the answers bacon or A or... Proper American bacon. Yeah, not that ham crap. Yeah. First was... Uh, the Elkans, they look used. Why? We already covered that yeah, one. Yeah. Um, footprints of the Zoptech. Well, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll circle we'll back on that because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do have it. And then, uh, But the thing is, it doesn't matter as much with you guys because you already make the mounts. Right. right. <laughs> um, and then to the Optech, Zoptech, um, night vision rated or night vision compatible, question mark, pistol rated, you know, things like that, that I'm sure we will get questions on. And then on the SAI, the Radical uh, was curious if it's set up for a 200 yard. Zero or a fifty slash two hundred yard zero. It's designed to be zero to hundred meters. Hundred meters. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the and you know that, the manual will go through it, but it's it's designed to be to be zero to hundred meters, and that's kind of the rapid aiming feature is all built around that hundred meter zero. All okay. the aim offs below that are based yeah. on the hundred meter zero. Good. That's good. good to know. Yeah. And if yeah, if we want to get into it, what is it? It's a uh, sixty two grain uh, out of a sixteen inch M four barrel. Yep. Uh, for the five five six. And just because people ask it, and mm-hmm. then on the 7.62 version, it's a 20-inch AR-10 AR barrel, and it's a blended reticle between 147 grain and 147 grain ball and 168 grain match. Right. Right. And those were the two original reticles in the in the L yeah. exactly. And what was you said the, the recoil rating? All good on that. 
good for, good for a scar. That's pistols all, and that's night, that's all you got. What about, night vision? What about <laughs> well, night vision reading on the pistol dash? and so, night vision? Yeah. So pistols, we've we've. We went down the road of developing a pistol mount for that, um, and we tested it quite extensively on a pistol. Uh, we've had it on our drop tester, so it's been drop tested to the same kind of kind of degree. Wow. We ran these. it through our vi- our version of mil spec testing, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and it was passed with flying yeah. colors. So good. and good. night vision settings. Uh, I don't know. It goes really low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably going to work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's a good question. I don't think we've yeah, been asked, I, but it it it. it Based on the you know, based on the illumination, it, it would work. Um, however, there are no dedicated night vision right. settings. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, most. I mean, most people I think are running an IR laser if they're running uh, not. Right. So I mean, it's it's not, not you super know, critical. It's not it's super kind critical. Kind of like a locking yeah. turret. Like IR laser is going to be seen yeah. both ways, though. That's the thing. It, it can. Yeah. So you got to got to make it count in yeah. the first shot. So. Uh, all right. So my list of questions here from the other guys. Um, are there any more reticle options coming down the road? That was with the SAI. So, I mean, yes. short answer is yes. Um, yes. You know, short answer for for everything. I mean, uh, you can talk about the tangents too. Like, eventually, yes. I mean, we have we're multiple to- things in play right yeah. now. I was talking about it. must know right now. <laughs> 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 Next time we come back to the podcast, right. we'll, we'll let you know. Another 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> we might just have to do a special remote satellite podcast from uh, yeah. Nova Scotia. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> so, uh, and are SA Optics going to offer any other color options like black? So the short answer is potentially yes, maybe. Um, we you get the radical scenario worked out first, probably. S- yeah, I think we 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 really just wanted to get this right, um, and at that point in time, everything was coyote tan, right. coyote brown, um, still hot, still hot, yeah. so now, hot right our, now. Our, I like that because it's got almost like a pearl. It's a really nice. It. It's a really really yeah, nice a finish. Color. They're both good colors. This has yeah. a little green vibe to it. It's funny that one. Um, that one specifically, if you put it on, so we have a we have a coyote brown rifle at the shop. We have a green rifle at the shop. You put it on the green rifle, it looks green. You put it on the coyote brown yep. rifle, it's it one of those. Yeah. It's like paint in yeah. a room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It certainly wasn't wasn't what was intended when we came out with it, but it just seems to be sure, a you know, pleasant byproduct. Nice. So just to to go back to your question, our European customers uh, and SAI has been very popular over mm. there. It's all they want is black. Um, so it's just another skew and time, and and it is. It has been discussed. We don't have anything in production right now, but yes, potentially we'll probably uh, have a black. When you've got scope. some bandwidth and parts. That's it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, are there more variants of the SAI? That's pretty much the same thing. Uh, well, no. Okay, he was talking about more scope models, more pow- different power ranges in SAI. So this is maybe one of the things that we are we shouldn't talk about, but we'll talk about anyway. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. it. Why not? So, Yes. There, this, right now we have a uh, a one to ten um, that is in is past all of the the hard tests and we basically have to get it into a nice. production phase. But like we've been discussing um, throughout the show, we want to make sure that you know it's going to live up to everything else right. that we're doing. Right. So uh, that's about all we can say right now. But yeah, there's there's that and more. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the whole idea behind the brand was, you know, to bring something, bring good glass at an affordable price to right, market, right. And, uh, but also fill some holes that we're not going to fill with right. tangent theta. Uh, I think and we, we were talking earlier about a, a low power variable optic for tangent theta. Uh, you know, it's, it would immediately <laughs> become the most expensive right, thing on right. the market. We can't right. do that. So, right. you know, while I don't think you, and again, this is just conjecture, but I don't think you'll ever see a five to 25 SAI, but you know, if there's a hole in the market, that's not filled by a tangent theta. You know, I maybe think we can. Something something like this make it like a like a two to twelve by forty something 42, pretty much yeah. Mark twelve. Think of a Mark twelve optic. I think that'd be really neat. Yeah, like, like, a, like, a, like an M- MPV, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, that that's definitely there is a hole there for sure. Something like the uh, like the two and a half to ten by forty two NXS. Uh, I think it's overlooked a lot. And there's not really it's anything else though. that does. It is, but it's still the only one in its yep. in its mm-hmm. space. So yeah, I, it'd be neat to see something in that range, two to twelve or first focal, two to twelve yeah. forty two first focal with all Exposed of your exposed turrets, illumination. Yeah, yeah, the recipe is pretty straightforward. Just shrink <laughs> the recipe on this <laughs> into an SAI. All right, I mean two to that's easy. We could probably do that. Just put that into the machine and yeah. <laughs> well, if you wash it, if you wash it at too hot a setting, it'll do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> And a two to twelve. You really got me thinking there. Two to twelve, forty-two, and that would be sweet. I'll All right, okay, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. 
Uh, don't re- try and sell things we don't have. <laughs> explosion, <laughs> explosion of specters. We talked about that. So basically, it was um, radical. Was there? There was some new radical as well. Well, there's the new we levers the, the for one. The yeah, levers. You can, you can get them with the red dot available. Optics. Yeah, red dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of stuff. And as far as the specter line goes, that that's it right now. Um, you know, just trying to expand it to make it a little bit more um, appealing to more people. Right. And one of the guys said, why should I spend money on a tangent? What, what makes it next level? Well, I don't think we've covered a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, that, like, like I said, the, the big thing for me, when I, when I talk to people, um, you know, because chances are, I said chances are, I mean, I, I expect very often I'll get a phone call and then, you know, you'll get a phone call after that conversation about tangent <laughs> theta. Um, you know, when, when I talk to people about tangent theta, it's, you know, we talk about the glass quality, we talk about the, you know, the image quality, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I, I mentioned it five minutes ago, the thing that doesn't get discussed as much as it should is the mechanical repeatability. Like when you look at tracking tests, it's bang on every time. It always comes back to zero. Point one is point one, you know, every time. Well, so we stand behind it. Yeah. Um, and if yeah, you guys have always jumped on anything yeah. that With ever this, popped up. We've been in business for thirty-four years, and our customer base, you know, bleeds through multiple lines and we want to support the people that support us and you know if somebody has a problem everybody needs to know that we'll drop everything and we take it seriously and we'll do our best to fix it as quick as we can and you guys have been nothing but stellar to deal with in the time i mean i've been dealing with you guys for stuff happens. 12 years yeah now, so it's pretty yeah. rare though i mean i can't remember the last time i had a tangent issue at all yeah. Occasionally, I mean, something happens. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, nothing's nothing's made by man, and that's something people need to understand. Yeah. Is even though it's a tangent, something's going to happen once in a while. Yeah. That's it, right? It's like, I mean, it, you know, what we can tell people is when they leave the factory, um, you know, they've, they've been through a, a, a robust QC process. Right. You know, once they've been in the wild and they've had ten thousand rounds down the barrel, hey, like I said, things happen, and when it does, we'll stand behind it. Or if it does, I should say, right. we'll stand behind it. I mean, ultimately, these scopes came about because Andy, it, it was when Andy first drew drew these things up. It wasn't necessarily about making money; it was about making the best scope. the best scope, yeah. um, and to get something that he couldn't get in the market. Yeah, that fit his right. shooting. Because he, yeah, he was he, he was just a championship shooter, and and he he wanted something that wasn't available, so he built it, and and that kind of that's what. That's a very cool story. Uh, all right, last question. This is the hard hitter. <laughs> this is. Uh, do you think there's treasure on Oak Island? Oh, baby, I was waiting for that question. <laughs> was that Luke that wrote that? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was, Nap- was that Josh? Uh, was Josh. That's a valid question. I told him I'd ask him. He said it's really real <laughs> yeah, close to them. So. You know what? It's uh, it's probably about 35 minutes away from where it is, uh, we man. live. Uh, we, I, I, I'll, I'm going to put mine out there before you do. Um, <laughs> I, uh, there's... there's there's a couple of geologists. Um, Dale's a geologist. Yes, I know. Um, yeah. My father-in-law, sorry, who, nice. who Trevor knows, um, who are quite adamant that it, it just doesn't. Yeah, uh, there just isn't. Uh, I'm a believer. There's it's a big scam. <laughs> it's a big scam. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool history in that area. There's a yeah. lot of. Um, artifacts that have been found, and not just in Oak Island, but they've managed to make a really big production out of this show, which is kind of cool. But hey, let's talk about Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> please don't get these guys started on that. <laughs> like we can. Who is it in the office that likes Trailer? Park? Is that I Jared? Don't I don't know. That's I'm out of that. That and Letter Kenny. Oh, oh Letter Kenny's fantastic. Letter Kenny. It is really yeah. fantastic. We actually you know, named a transplant to Canada. <laughs> we actually change. named some of our servers here in the building after some characters on those shows. Oh, <laughs> That's how deep it goes <laughs> in uh, in our place here. Oh yeah, there's 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 daily references in the sales office to Letter Kenny. <laughs> well, pretty much just you though. But That's, it's mostly Jared and I, to be honest. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, that's all I have. Yeah. So ditto. Well, we, thanks for joining us, guys. Glad you came down to visit. Nah, thanks for having us. Uh, I thought yeah. that was pretty awesome. So. Uh, one thing we we uh, th- these these guys are gracious enough to offer is they are going to give away another SAI. So because we're more, the first Canucks details. on the show, yeah. let's <laughs> celebration go for it. first international. In the words of Canadians. DJ Collin. <laughs> so there will be some more info uh, about an, a giveaway of the SAI one to six upcoming. Yeah, you definitely want that. Well, thank you guys for for coming here and allowing us to give one of your 
It's going to play. I wish I can sign up for it because I want one so bad. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, I can't. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. As they say. Sorry. Uh, hey. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that'll that'll wrap it up for uh, episode, I believe we're on eight now, of group therapy. Are we? Yeah. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, either Tangent Theta related, Alcan, uh, Psy, any of the other brands that were covered here today, uh, you can give us a, a, send us an email at grouptherapy at eurooptic.com and we'll do our best to answer those. Uh, and if you have any topic ideas, also you can send it that email. So uh, lastly, thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next episode.